Good morning, everyone. Today is Wednesday, February 8th, and Jeff and I are here. Good morning. Good morning. It's really early. It's like 7 o'clock in the morning. Um, we are here to do a full metabolic rate and body composition analysis. Uh, we needed to come early because we are actually fasted, so the test will be more accurate. So I will catch you when we are in the room. You'll see here that Jeff hops on the scale to get his weight measured, and I actually had to take my clothing off to do so, so you won't see me. But we did start off with me getting naked, and then I hopped on the scale to get my weight measured. Okay, Danielle? You are a master's student? Yep. Okay, what are you getting your master's in? Exercise science. After that, Danielle did a preliminary seven site skin fold test with calipers taken at the chest, scapula, axilla, tricep, waist, hip, and thigh. This can be used to estimate body fat, but the body metrics ultrasound is a more accurate measure, which is what she did next. Using the initial skin fold as a reference for making sure that the ultrasound was functioning properly. This ultrasound generates a signal that travels through an interface, which in this case is skin, subcutaneous fat, fat muscle, and muscle bone. Then it is partially reflected back to the transducer as an echo and gives an estimate for subcutaneous fat thickness taken at the same seven sites as the previously mentioned skin fold test to get an estimated total percent body fat. So yes, oh. guess what my, guess what my, what, what was your um, original assumption? Last night I said 18. 18. Yeah. Okay, so I am actually 13.6% body fat. I have 107 pounds of lean body mass, and then I have 16.8, because I can't do math, of um, body fat. Jeff says I need to eat more cake. <laughs> I would like to comment on the fact that my percent body fat is a bit low, and that machines like this are usually a good measure for a change over time, and baseline readings can have up to a 5% error, meaning that I could actually be up to 18.6% body fat. Categorically, I would be considered in the athletic range for body fat and considering the normal range for athletes is 14 to 20 percent I would actually fit into this range additionally I'd like to note on how this compares to a DEXA scan research shows that the DEXA produces similar numbers to the ultrasound each with their own pitfalls and accuracy or percent error where the DEXA has shown to have up to a 10 percent error in lean individuals this is important to know so you can take baseline readings of your own percent body fat with a grain of salt and use it as a tool to track changes over time moving on so this is basically a really fancy bioelectrical impedance machine to measure body water. So the cool thing about it is that it's going to be able to measure intracellular versus extracellular body water. Next, I hopped onto the table to settle and was hooked up to the bioelectrical impedance analyzer, or BIA. And it works by sending an electrical current through the body between the placed electrodes. You can see here that they're attached to my hands and feet. This current runs through the body and will take a measurement based off of how the signal is impeded by different types of tissue. Very resistance in things like blood, bone, and fat. The machine will determine the resistance of flow, and based off of the low and high frequencies used, you can estimate how much of the total water in your body is within the cell, or intracellular, or outside the cell, or extracellular. This is useful information for people who have a lot of muscle tissue, who desire more water to reside within the muscle, to give the muscle the appearance of fullness. You can read some of that. Yeah. yeah. We're not. <laughs> All right, so according to this machine, your fat mass is 11 pounds. Not a lot. There Holy crap, 104,000 calories stored in your body. Yep. Wait, what happened? You have 104,000 calories stored in your body. How do you feel about that? that sounds like a lot. <laughs> it's, it's all muscle. This is why. This is, <laughs> this is, I am, that is me right now. <laughs> Daily energy expenditure is 2,376 calories. You're lean. Am I? That's if you needed a machine to tell you that. Uh, no! <laughs> water man. My, my fifth grade biology book said I'm 75% water. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, this indirect calorimetry device measured my resting metabolic rate, or RMR, which is how many calories you burn throughout the day simply at rest. And using a face mask measuring exhaled and inhaled gas through a turbine flow meter, it is able to measure my breath by breath minute ventilation. At the same time, a sample of gas is conveyed to the analyzer and VO2 and VCO2 are measured and is converted into energy expenditure, making an estimate for the entire day. I hope you found all this information about the equipment informative, and I will catch you in the workout voiceover. I'm back inside the performance and physique enhancement lab. Go Bulls. <laughs> um, okay, so we're gonna do a glute workout and using a lot of equipment that you don't generally find in a gym, so we're really gonna take advantage of using it. Before I do that, I'm also gonna mix up my pre-workout. So I'm gonna be taking 
two scoops of high volume, two scoops of prolific, and it's still pretty early. It's 10.30 in the morning, and I don't normally train this early, so I'm gonna need, need all the help I can get. Hey guys, so after doing a bit of warming up, Jeff and I jumped straight into the workout, and this day I wasn't really feeling great. I ended up getting very sick. I strayed away from my usual powerlifting program, and we did a higher volume, hypertrophy focused session, doing lower weight and higher rep count. We started with a resistance band hip thrust using a fancy hip thruster, which is a machine designed to perform this exact movement and has the ability to attach resistance bands. After using it, I can now attest that this machine feels so much better than using a rigged bench variation that I do at my local gym. I love utilizing this movement for glutes, of course, in combination with a variety of exercises, as you should always do when training a particular muscle group. But I'd like to marinate on this movement for a moment for those of you who haven't tried it. If you are trying to grow your glutes, I would highly recommend it. And if you are short on time that day in the gym, or just in general, I would choose this one over a back squat. And if you're familiar with the literature, then you know who Brett Contreras is, and you probably know that this exercise has been shown in his lab to elicit superior glute and biceps femoris EMG amplitude in comparison with a traditional barbell back squat, for which they believe is because the barbell allows the lifter to maintain consistent hip extension throughout the entire range of motion. I'd also like to point out that there is much less activation of the outer quad with the hip thrust, a muscle that females generally prefer not to focus on when doing legs. We did four sets of 12 to 15 reps, and although not using a barbell that day, we just wanted to experiment with just using bands and surprisingly still got a good burn from this. Then we moved on to doing the reverse hyper extension machine, which is predominantly used for targeting hamstrings and glutes, but it also boasts to strengthen your back and decompress the spine. We started with no added resistance, but then moved on to adding 10 pound plates, doing four sets of 10 to 12. I found these were pretty challenging and could really feel it in my hamstrings. After that, we did leg press, again with a lighter weight and higher rep scheme. We did four sets of 10 to 12 reps, and I like to focus on pointing out my toes and keeping my feet higher up on the platform, which is where I usually feel the most glute activation as opposed to allowing my quads to take over. Another hamstring focus exercise we did was the glute ham raise or GHR. And these are also very challenging and really target your hamstrings. But depending on how far out you go down, you can make it a more glute focused exercise as well. I was actually focusing on targeting both that day by positioning the pad mid thigh, doing slow and controlled movements and trying to feel the utilization of both my hamstrings and glutes to lower my body and then raise it back up. We also did four sets in the 10 to 12 rep range. A very cool machine that we had the opportunity to use was a variable load hamstring curl machine that allows you to add or remove resistance at different parts of the entire range of motion. This allows you to dictate the movement to be heavier at the bottom and gets lighter as you curl, or lighter at the bottom and heavier at the top. Very interesting and bizarre feeling as I'm accustomed to an equated weight distribution in a normal hamstring curl, but I feel like this would be extremely effective at targeting your hamstring weak points. And lastly, we finished off doing dumbbell RDLs, doing very low weight as a finisher exercise just to burn out the hamstrings. Personally, I just like doing some sort of burnout because I just like the way it feels and it gives a great pump to end a workout on a good note. I'd like to say that I often advocate for lifting heavy for muscle growth, but there is good reason to incorporate a mix of heavy low rep training with lighter higher rep training. This lighter load and higher rep training has a clear molecular pathway by which higher reps with low to moderate weight could lead to greater metabolic stress, cell swelling, and metabolite buildup. And this is believed to activate muscle stem cells, which are also referred to as satellite cells. These satellite cells are activated to rapidly multiply, differentiate, and fuse to rebuild new functional myofibers, aka more muscle gained. And on that note, we were done. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and I really hope that you've been enjoying my content so far. I'd like to give a huge thank you to Dr. Bill Campbell for letting us use his lab facilities as well as this really nice gym. Don't forget to check out Jeff's version of this video. He will have all of his stats in his video. It's really interesting. Also stay tuned for when I decide to do the 10,000 calorie challenge as well as doing the 24 hour fast. If you like the video, please like the video and please subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye. You <laughs> <laughs> do some body weight spots with it.